There was nothing about the starry sky that night to suggest that strange and mysterious things would soon be happening. As unsuspecting muggles slept, a huge motorbike with a giant astride it tumbled down from the darkness. The giant, named Hagrid, left a blanket-wrapped bundle on the doorstep of number four, Privet Drive. Hagrid, at last. And where did you get that motorbike? Borrowed it, Professor Dumbledore, sir. No problems, were there? No, sir. House was almost destroyed, but I got him out all right. Nestled in the bundle was a baby, Harry Potter, the boy who lived. For the next 11 years, Harry lived with his dreadful Aunt Petunia, Uncle Vernon, and Cousin Dudley, the Dursleys. Then one day, he received a letter inviting him to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Told you, didn't I, Harry? Told you you was famous. Professor Quirrell. Harry, Professor Quirrell will be one of your teachers at Hogwarts. Potter, can't tell you how pleased I am to meet you. What sort of magic do you teach, Professor Quirrell? D -d Defense against the dark arts. Not that you need it, eh, P Potter? You'll be getting all your equipment, I suppose. I've got to pick up a new book on vampires myself. Must get on, lots to buy. Come on, Harry. Three up, two across. Right, stand back, Harry. Welcome to Diagon Alley. But we can't buy anything without money. Go to Gringotts to get some Canuts, Sickles and Galleons. Grip Hook'll see you right. I'm off to the Leaky Cauldron for a few butter beers if you need me. I'll meet you when you're all done. Gone on holiday. Back next week. Due to some faulty cauldrons causing a stir, we are closed today. Sorry. Gone to Paris for which which fashion show? We apologize to our customers for temporary closure. We are trying to locate our disappearing ink. due to family illness. Harry Potter, stay well away from here. That is Nocturne Alley. The shops down there deal only in the dark arts. 
Now run along before I turn you into a vole. Like to be a vole, would ya? Now run along. Maybe I'll turn you into a turnip and then eat ya for my tea. <laughs> Welcome to Gringotts, Mr. Potter. To access the vault, you must collect all the forms and then hand them to the goblin outside the door. The first vault is on your left as you go through these double doors. Good luck. Good afternoon, Mr. Potter. I'll explain how to steer the mine cart. Be careful, Mr. Potter. There are many obstacles in these mines. Steer clear of them if you want to hold on to your coins. There are bonus gems hidden in this mine, and only accurate control of your mine cart will reveal them. Collect as many canuts as you can to complete the level. Mr. Potter, I understand you're quite expert in the collection of canuts. I wonder if you'll prove as talented at collecting sickles. There are bonus gems hidden in this mine, and only accurate control of your mine cart will reveal them. Good luck.
the famous Mr. Potter. You have quite a reputation down here, sir. The other goblins are convinced you'll steer the mine cart easily. Good luck, you may need it. Be careful, Mr. Potter. There are many obstacles in these mines. Steer clear of them if you want to hold on to your coins. There are bonus gems hidden in this mine, and only accurate control of your mine cart will reveal them. Mr. Potter, you're back. It's always a pleasure to see you. You've collected all three coins now, Mr. Potter. I hope you spend them wisely. While at Gringotts Wizard Bank, Hagrid collected a scruffy package from Vault 713, mentioning to Harry that the package, whatever it was, would be safer at Hogwarts. Just your wand left from Ollivanders. Oh yeah, and I still haven't got your birthday present. Hello? Good afternoon. Ah, yes. Yes, yes. I thought I'd be seeing you soon, Harry Potter. You have your mother's eyes. It seems only yesterday she was in here herself, buying her first wand. Ten and a quarter inches long, swishy, made of willow. Nice wand for charm work. Your father, on the other hand, favored a mahogany wand. Well, I say your father favored it. It's really the wand that chooses the wizard, of course. Well now, Mr. Potter, let's get started, shall we? If you'll kindly follow me. Have a look around, Mr. Potter. When you find a wand you like, pick it up and let's see if it likes you. Ebony and unicorn hair. Eight and a half inches. Springy. Stand over there, on that platform, to try your wand. My goodness. Definitely not. Be 
beechwood and dragon heartstring. Nine inches. Nice and flexible. Definitely not. Holly and Phoenix Feather. Eleven inches. Nice and supple. I wonder... Curious. How very curious. Sorry, but what's curious? I remember every wand I've ever sold, Mr. Potter. Every single wand. It so happens that the phoenix, whose tail feather is in your wand, gave another feather. Just one other. It is very curious indeed that you should be destined for this wand and its brother. Why, its brother gave you that scar. Yes. Curious indeed how these things happen. The wand chooses the wizard, remember? I think we must expect great things from you, Mr. Potter. After all, he who must not be named did great things. Terrible, yes, but great. Hey, Harry. Happy birthday, Harry. She's beautiful. What's her name? Her name's Hedwig, and she's yours to keep. Thanks, Hagrid. We best be going now. The Hogwarts Express is leaving very soon, and you don't want to miss it. Soon after, Harry caught the Hogwarts Express from Platform 9 and 3 quarters and left the Muggle world far behind. The train slowed right down and finally stopped. They followed Hagrid down to the edge of a great black lake. The fleet of little boats moved off all at once, gliding across the lake which was as smooth as glass. Everyone was silent until... Ooh, oh, wicked! One by one, each of the first years was sorted into his or her house. And what of Harry Potter? Hmm, difficult, very difficult. Plenty of courage, I see. Not a bad mind, either. There's talent, oh yes. And a thirst to prove yourself. But where to put you? Not Slytherin. Not Slytherin. Not Slytherin, eh? Are you sure? You could be great, you know. It's all here in your head. And Slytherin will help you on your way to greatness. There's Not no Slytherin. doubt about that. Anything but Slytherin. No? Well, if you're sure, better be Gryffindor! Welcome to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. I am Albus Dumbledore, your headmaster. Now, Hogwarts is full of secrets, Harry, so search behind every door. But keep in mind, 
And not all secrets are rewarding. Only this morning, I took a wrong turn and stumbled upon a room full of chocolate frogs. But alas, when I returned, they'd been replaced by a, a nasty horde of fire crabs. Oh, um, which reminds me, uh, the third floor corridor is out of bounds to everyone who does not wish to suffer a most painful death. Nitwit, blubber, oddment, tweak, four wonderful words, don't you think? Hey, Harry! Hello! I'm Ron Weasley. I'm in Gryffindor too. It's no surprise, really. All my brothers are in Gryffindor. So, why do you think Professor Dumbledore put the third for House of Bounds? I really don't know. Come on, we've got to follow that prefect. It's odd, because he usually gives us a reason why we're not allowed to go somewhere. I do think he might have told us prefects at least. That prefect's Percy, my other brother. How many brothers have you got? Too many. My name's Hermione Granger, by the way. And you are? Uh, Ron. Ron Weasley. Pleasure. You've got something on your nose. You huh? must be Harry Potter. I know all about you, of course. Look out! Filch is coming! We'd better go! This is the most direct path to the dormitory. Oh, and keep an eye on the staircases. They like to... change. Follow me, everyone. Keep up. Keep up, please, and follow me. Quickly now, come on. Peeves, a poltergeist. <laughs> Way, Peeves, or the Baron will hear about this. I mean it. You want to watch out for Peeves. The bloody Baron's the only one who can control him. He won't even listen to us prefects. Gather round here. Password? You need a password to enter the common room. This year, it's Caput Draconis. Caput Draconis. Well done, young Gryffindor. That is indeed the correct password. Thanks, Harry. Okay, Harry. It's been a long day. I'm really tired, and I'm off to bed. Hello, Harry Potter. I am nearly headless Nick, the Gryffindor house ghost. By the look of that scar, you must be Harry Potter. I'm Fred Weasley, and this is my brother, George. Hello there, Harry. We have a proposal for you. In Hogwarts, there are special portraits, and behind these special portraits are prizes. But of course, not just anyone can open up the portraits. You need to know the password. See you around, Harry. Welcome to Hogwarts. Hogwarts has four houses. They are Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. The hourglasses show which house has the greatest number of house points on any day. While you're here, your house will be like your family. Your triumphs will earn you points. Any rule breaking and you will lose points. At the end of the year, the house with the most points is awarded the House Cup. And let me tell you, it's about time Gryffindor won. Please try and remember, only prefects and teachers can award house points and they can also take them away. 
Time to sample the rare delights of the upper castle, eh? Just watch out for Filch and his cat, Mrs. Norris. Join us, Harry. We're about to start the transfiguration lesson. Transfiguration is the most complex and dangerous magic you'll learn at Hogwarts. Anyone messing around in my class will leave and not come back. You have been warned. Heading for potions class, Harry. Don't be late. Snape's a royal pain. He's always looking for an excuse to take house points away from Gryffindor. Double potions with the Slytherins? Snape's head of the Slytherin house. They say he always favours them. We'll be able to see if it's true. It's true then. Harry Potter's come to Hogwarts. This is Crab, and this is Goyle, and my name is Malfoy. Draco Malfoy. <coughs> Think my name's funny, do you? No need to ask yours. Red hair and a hand-me-down robe. You must be a Weasley. You'll soon find out that some wizarding families are better than others, Potter. You don't want to go making friends with the wrong sort. I can help you there. I think I can tell who the wrong sort are for myself, thanks. Buzz off, Potter! He's a nasty piece of work. Just ignore him. Us Gryffindor should stick together. You are here to learn the subtle science and exact art of potion making. As there is little foolish wand waving here, many of you will hardly believe this is magic. I don't expect you will really understand the beauty of this softly simmering cauldron with its shimmering fumes, the delicate power of liquids that creep through human veins, bewitching the mind, ensnaring the senses. I can teach you how to bottle fame, brew glory, even stop a death. If you aren't as big a bunch of dunderheads as I usually have to teach. Mr. Potter, tell me, what would I get if I added powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood? I don't know, sir. Pity. Clearly fame isn't everything, is it, Mr. Potter? Where would you look if I told you to find me a bazaar? I don't know, sir. Thought you wouldn't open a book before coming, eh? For your information, Potter, a bazaar is a stone taken from the stomach of a goat, and it will save you from most poisons. Now pay attention, Potter. To mix a Wiganweld potion, first activate the cauldron. Then you have to press the three symbols indicated until the cauldron fills. If you manage to fill your cauldron, you'll be able to activate the cauldron to retrieve the potion. Your turn, Potter. Good enough. Only a fool would expect better. Professor Snape? He doesn't want to teach potions. Everyone knows he's after Quirrell's job. Knows an awful lot about the dark art, Snape. Hello, Harry. I'm Neville Longbottom. This is my remember-all. It tells you if there's something you've forgotten to do. Oh, I almost forgot. Watch out for Draco Malfoy. I saw him sneaking around here just a moment ago. Have you tried a broomstick yet? I think I'm a bit scared of flying. Ugh. I see you rescued Hedwig. She was eager to get out, so I opened the door for her. That'll teach Malfoy to mess with us. Hi, I'm Neville. I'm in Gryffindor too, 
Harry helped me escape from some flapping books. Nice to meet you, Neville. Come on down. Uh, it's all right. You guys go ahead. I think I've lost my toad, Trevor. Come on, Harry. Let's go. Dear Harry, would you like to come and have a cup of tea with me this afternoon? I want to hear all about your first day. Hagrid. Hagrid's bound to be in his hut. Come on, Harry, follow me. Make yourselves at home. This is Ron. Another Weasley, eh? <laughs> I spent half my life chasing your twin brothers away from the forest. Hey Ron, somebody broke into Gringotts. Listen, believed to be the work of dark wizards or witches unknown, Gringotts goblins, while acknowledging the breach, insist nothing was taken. The vault in question, number 713, had been emptied earlier that very same day. That's odd. That's the vault that Hagrid and I went to. Back in their Gryffindor common room, Harry, Ron and Hermione talked about their exciting first days at Hogwarts. There was much talk about the break-in at Gringotts Wizard Bank. But there was little time to dwell on this, since Harry and his friends were expected at their flying lesson with Madame Hooch. Harry, I'll show you where the flying lesson is. Follow me. Watch yourself, Harry. I hear Madame Hooch is really strict. I'm still waiting for my broomstick. Our stupid owl is ancient. It's going to take forever. Follow like me, Harry. You'll never guess what I've found. This is the entrance to the Quidditch pitch. But first years like us aren't allowed to play. I hear they make exceptions sometimes, though. But only if you are very, very good. Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon, Madam Hooch. Hooch. Welcome to your first flying lesson. Well, what are you waiting for? Everyone step up to their broomsticks. Well done, Mr. Potter. You've earned your house a few points there. Longbottom, your turn. Whoa! Oh! Mi Mr. 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 Longbottom. Oh dear, it's a broken wrist. Come on now, it's all right, up you get. None of you are to move while I take this boy to the hospital wing. Come oh. on, dear. Did you see his face? Maybe if the fat lump had given this a squeeze, he would have remembered to fall on his fat backside. Give it here, Malfoy. No, I think I'll leave it somewhere for Longbottom to find. How about on the roof? What's the matter, Potter? bit beyond your reach. Give it here, Malfoy, or I'll knock you off your broom. Give me back Neville's remember all, Malfoy. You want the remember all back? See if you can catch it. And you better watch out for my bludgers! You'll pay for this! Here, take this stupid thing. I've no use for it. Don't think this is the last of it, Potter. I'd take you on any time on my own. 
Tonight, if you want. Wizard's Jewel? What's the matter? Never heard of a Wizard's Jewel? Of course he has. I'm his second. Meet me tonight on the fourth floor. Ones only. No contact. You've got my remember all back. Thanks, Harry. I'll be able to find my toad now. Mr. Potter, although I do not approve of your chasing Malfoy about, I'll admit you have remarkable talent on a broomstick. Ordinarily, first-year students may not compete in Quidditch. In your case, we might overlook that rule. Wow! You're going to play Quidditch, and as a seeker too. I just wanted to wish you good luck, Harry. Everyone's talking about you becoming a seeker, Harry. Why, you're the youngest seeker at Hogwarts in a century. As soon as I heard, I rushed down from my hut to give you a big congratulations. I know you'll catch the snitch first. I just know it. People only die in proper jewels. You know, with real wizards. The most you and Malfoy will be able to do is send sparks at each other. Neither of you knows enough magic to do any real damage. I bet he expected you to refuse anyway. If he tries to curse you, you'd better dodge it. Because I can't remember how to block them. Half past eleven, we'd better go. I can't believe you're going to do this, Harry. You, go back to bed. Come on. Don't you care about Gryffindor? Do you only care about yourselves? I don't want Slytherin to win the House Cup. And you'll lose all the points I got from Professor McGonagall for knowing about switching spells. Go away! All right, but I warned you. You just remember what I said when you're on the train home tomorrow. You're so... Now what am I going to do? That's your problem. We've got to go. We're going to be late. I'm coming with you. Come on, Harry. We have to get moving. Follow me to the fourth floor. I hope we don't run into any teachers. You should be careful sneaking around at night, Harry. You could get caught. I can't believe you're both going to do this. I wouldn't be doing this if the fat lady hadn't disappeared. Over here, Potter! Brought reinforcements, have you? Good. They can watch you lose. Follow me and let's finish this. Huh? Bye bye, Gryffindor. Ha ha ha! Looks like you've fallen into the Forbidden Corridor. It's a good job I let Professor Snape know. He'll be there any second now. Bye bye. Malfoy! There's only one way out of here and it's locked. Do you know any spells that can unlock it? Well, as it happens, I do. It's the Alahomora unlocking spell. This is it. We're done for. This is the end. Harry, are you all right? Thank goodness that's over with. It isn't over yet. We still have to get back to the Gryffindor common room. Cast Alahomora at the door and it will open up.
this door, Harry. Quick, in here! That was close. Ron, what are you... Sorry, Harry. I meant this door. Password? Caput Draconis. up in a school? If any dog needs exercise, that one does. You don't use your eyes, any of you, do you? Didn't you see what it was standing on? The floor? I wasn't looking at its feet. I was too busy with its heads. No, not the floor. It was standing on a trap door. It's obviously guarding something. What could possibly need such heavy protection? It's either really valuable or really dangerous. Or both. Well, it's going to have to wait. Have some bacon or something. Why aren't you eating anything? A bit early for mail, isn't it? But I never get mail. Let's open it. It's a broomstick. That's not just a broomstick, Harry. It's a Nimbus 2000. But who? You'll be able to fly anywhere around the grounds, but try not to crash into too many of the towers. Right. Now, Quidditch is easy enough to understand. There are seven players on each side. Three of them are called chasers. This ball's called the quaffle. The chasers throw the quaffle to each other and try to get it through one of the hoops to score a goal. 10 points every time the quaffle goes through one of the hoops. Now, there's another player on each side who's called the keeper. I'm keeper for Gryffindor. I have to fly around our hoops and stop the other team from scoring. Stand back. Bludgers rock around trying to knock players off their brooms. That's why you have two beaters on each team. It's their job to protect their side from the bludgers and try to knock them towards the other team. <laughs> to sum up so far, three chasers try and score with the quaffle. The keeper guards the goalposts. The beaters keep the bludgers away from their team. Now the last member of the team is the seeker, who doesn't have to worry about the quaffle or the bludgers. This is the golden snitch, and it's the most important ball of the lot. It's very hard to catch because it's so fast and difficult to see. It's the seeker's job to weave in and out of the chasers, beaters, bludgers and quaffle to catch the snitch before the other team's seeker because whichever seeker catches the snitch wins his team an extra 150 points, so they nearly always win. A game of Quidditch only ends when the snitch is caught. Any questions? No? Good. Want the password for the portrait, Harry? But watch yourself. There are some weird creatures running around out there. You must be Harry Potter. Welcome to Charms class. You're just in time.
Welcome, young wizards. I am Professor Flitwick, and today you will learn the spell Wingardium Leviosa. I can't wait to levitate objects. I can't believe Malfoy took your owl. We should use this spell to teach him a lesson. Cast Wingardium Leviosa on that statue, then move it onto that large plate. Wingardium Leviosa! Well done! Congratulations, Mr. Potter. You completed the challenge. Now, off you go. Mmm, blueberry pie. My favourite. Thanks, Harry. Watch out for Snape, Harry. He shows up when you'd least expect him. Where's Hermione? Pavati Patel said she wouldn't come out of the girls' bathroom on the second floor. She said that she's been in there all afternoon crying. Troll! In the dungeon! Troll! In the dungeon! I thought you wanted to know. Silence. Everyone will please not panic. Prefects will lead their house back to the dormitories. Teachers will follow me to the dungeons. I've just thought. Hermione, what's about her? She doesn't know about the troll. Harry, what's that smell? How could a troll get in? Don't ask me. They're supposed to be really stupid. Can you smell something? I think the troll's left the dungeon. It's in the girls' bathroom! Ah! Hermione! Hermione, Harry! The troll is enormous! I think so. Just knocked out. Wicked! Oh my goodness! Explain yourselves, both of you. Well, what it is, 
It's my fault, Professor McGonagall. Miss Granger. I went looking for the troll. I read about them and thought I could handle it. But I was wrong. If Harry and Ron hadn't come and found me, I'd probably be dead. Be that as it may, it was an extremely foolish thing to do. I would have expected more rational behaviour on your part, and I am very disappointed in you, Miss Granger. Five points will be taken from Gryffindor for your serious lack of judgment. As for you two gentlemen, I just hope you realise how fortunate you are. Not many first-year students could take on a fully grown mountain troll and live to tell the tale. Five points will be awarded to each of you for sheer dumb luck. Perhaps you ought to, to go. Could have had to get us out of trouble like that. Mind you, we did save her from a full grown mountain troll. Thanks. What are friends for? That was exhausting, Harry. I'm off to bed. See you later. Come on, let's get out of here. Exhausted from their encounter with the troll, Harry, Ron and Hermione returned to the Gryffindor common room and discussed the strange goings on at Hogwarts. Harry suspected that someone had released the troll to distract everyone so that they could get into the Forbidden Corridor. But there wasn't much time to think about who was behind this. Quidditch against Slytherin today? Good luck, Potter. Then again, now that you've proven yourself against a troll, a little game of Quidditch should be easy work for you. Even if it is against my boys. That was... Disturbing. I'll tell you what's disturbing. Snape smiling. Quidditch against Slytherin, eh? It'll really wipe the smiles of their faces if we win. Just as long as we're not wiping you off the field. Welcome, this is Lee Jordan speaking to you from a lively stadium here at Hogwarts. My doormate and so-called Quidditch expert Seamus Finnegan joins me for today's game between Gryffindor and Slytherin. Curiously, today's match should be a real corker. I'm sure everyone's been looking forward to this match. I know I have. We're flying. Throws it. Johnson. Spinette. They need to keep hold of the crumble. Bell makes a great tackle. Johnson. Yes. Good for noise. The first score of the game. Flips it. Oh, puts it in. Gryffindor lead by 20. Puts it in. Top of the pass. And there's the snitch. And Potter's after it. Potter edges in front. Don't know what Harry thinks he's doing. If I didn't know better, I'd say he'd lost control of his broom. Maybe something happened to it when Flint blocked him. No, can't nothing interfere with a broomstick except powerful dark magic. No kid could do that to a Nimbus 2000. Ow! It's Snape. He's jinxing the broom. What do we do? Leave it to me. Just look at Potter go! Incendio! Ow! Oh, 
looking at nothing. He's got the snitch. Well done, Harry. Harry! It was Snape. Hermione and I saw him. He was cursing your broomstick, muttering. He wouldn't take his eyes off you. I know a jinx when I see one. I've read all about them. Hagrid, you know all about magical creatures. Do you know anything about that dog on the third floor? How do you know about Fluffy? Fluffy? Yeah, he's mine. Bought him off a Greek chappy I met in the pub last year. I lent him to Dumbledore to guard the... Yes? Um, never mind. That's top secret, that is. You forget that dog, and you forget what it's guarding. That's between Professor Dumbledore and Nicholas Flamel. Nicholas Flamel? Why does that name sound familiar? I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. Christmas! You too! Will you look at this? I've got some presents! What did you expect? Turnips? If that's what I think it is... They're really rare and really valuable! What is it? It's an invisibility cloak! I'm sure it is! Look! Hedwig is back! She has a message from Hermione! Read it, Harry! Merry Christmas, Harry. Merry Christmas, Ron. Ever since Hagrid mentioned Nicholas Flamel, I've been trying to find out who he is. I've been wondering for a while if information about Flamel isn't somewhere in the restricted section of the library. Unfortunately, you need a specially signed note from one of the teachers to look in any of the restricted books, and I know you'll never get one. I think there's a book called A Study of Recent Developments in Wizardry in there that might give us a clue to who he is. You will keep looking while I'm away, won't you? And send me an owl if you find anything. See you soon, Hermione. Your father left this invisibility cloak in my possession before he died. It is time it was returned to you. Use it well. Come on, Harry. Hermione said we need to find that book. A study of recent developments in wizardry. In the restricted section of the library. I've heard there are books in the restricted section containing powerful dark magic. Never taught at Hogwarts. Harry, the book we're looking for is usually only read by older students studying advanced defense against the dark arts. I hope Madame Pince isn't in the library. Maybe you should try out the cloak. You'll be able to go in the restricted section without being seen. I'll meet you in the common room later. Yes, Mr. Filch, what is it? Professor Snape, you said to alert you if I heard anyone sneaking around in the Forbidden Corridor. Well, Mrs. Norris and I suspect that one of the students may be trying to sneak past us. I see. That's very interesting, Mr. Filch. And I have an idea who it might be. But we have ways of dealing with interlopers. You have my permission to use the harshest measures necessary. There is something very special in the Forbidden Corridor that I've had my eye on for some time. We can't let anyone interfere with my plans, can we, Mr. Filch? 
No, indeed, Professor Snipe. Mrs. Norris and I will be extra vigilant watching out for intruders. See that you do, Mr. Filch. I have something special planned for anyone who tries to defy me. in the mirror of Erised were Harry's parents, James and Lily Potter. Harry stared hungrily back as though hoping to fall right through the glass and reach them. He was startled when a voice sounded behind him. Harry turned slowly about. So, you, like hundreds before you, have discovered the delights of the mirror of Erised. I didn't know it was called that, sir. Can you think what the mirror of Erised shows us all? It... well... it shows me, my family. Let me give you a clue. The happiest man on Earth would look into the mirror and see only himself exactly as he is. So then, it shows us what we want? Whatever we want? Yes, and no. It shows us nothing more or less in the deepest and most desperate desires of our hearts. You, Harry, you have never known your family. You see them standing beside you, but remember this, Harry. This mirror gives us neither knowledge nor truth. Men have wasted away in front of it, even gone mad. That is why tomorrow it will be moved to a new home. And I must ask you not to go looking for it again. It does not do to dwell on dreams, Harry, and forget to live. Adding ominously that if Harry ever came across it again, he would be prepared. But prepared for what, thought Harry. Now, why don't you get off to bed? you two. If Filch had caught you. I checked that copy of A Study of Recent Developments in Wizardry you found in the restricted section. No mention of Nicholas Flamel. Shame about not finding him. I'm sure I've read Flamel's name somewhere. <laughs> Mr. Potter, Hogwarts' second Quidditch match of the year is about to begin. Gryffindor will be competing against the redoubtable talents of the Ravenclaw team. I realize this comes on short notice, but you're the best seeker we've had for ages. We're all waiting for you at the Quidditch pitch, so come at once. Deputy Headmistress McGonagall. I'm going to check another book later. Notable magical names of our time. Might have some mention of Flamel. Getting ready for Quidditch, are you? It's going to be an exciting game. Ravenclaw is a fine team. You better get going, Harry. The Quidditch match is about to start. Welcome to Quidditch! I'm your commentator, Lee Jordan! The Quidditch pitch has three goals at each end. The chasers slow the couple and try to put it through the hoops to score. Watch out for the bludgers. These are charm balls that can knock you off your broomstick. Two meters of each team try to keep them away. Harry Potter is once again Gryffindor's team seeker. In the last match against Hufflepuff, he caught the snitch to win the game. Remember, when the snitch appears, it releases speed rings that will help the seeker fly faster. A glint of 
gold. Is that the snitch? Potter's seen the snitch. Yeah! Potter's moving in for the kill. A near miss for Potter. He's getting closer. Potter's gaining. Dodges a speeding Roger! Do you remember that Dumbledore said that the upper castle is out of bounds to all students? That must be where the stolen object is. Let's split up and look for a way up there. Good luck, Harry. Harry! Harry! What's up? It's Neville. You've got to come to the common room quickly. What happened? Leg Leg lock curse. Malfoy. Malfoy. I met him outside the library. He said he'd been looking for someone to practice that on. You're worth 12 of Malfoy. The sorting hat chose you for Gryffindor, didn't it? And where's Malfoy? Is thinking Slytherin. Thanks, Harry. I think I'll go to bed. Do you want the card? You collect them, don't you? <gasps> I found him! I found Flamel! Listen to this. Dumbledore is particularly famous for his defeat of the dark wizard Grindelwald in 1945, the discovery of the 12 uses of dragon's blood, and his work on alchemy with his partner, Nicholas Flamel. I knew the name sounded familiar. I knew it! I knew it! I never thought to look in here. I got this out of the library weeks ago for a bit of light reading. This is light? Nicholas Flamel is the only known maker of the Sorcerer's Stone. The what? Oh, honestly, don't you two read? Of course. Here it is. Nicholas Flamel is the only known maker of the Sorcerer's Stone. The Sorcerer's Stone is a legendary substance with astonishing powers. It'll transform any metal into pure gold and produces the elixir of life, which will make the drinker immortal. Immortal? It means you never die. 
The only stone currently in existence belongs to Mr. Nicholas Flamel, the noted alchemist who last year celebrated his 665th birthday. No wonder we couldn't find Flamel in that A study of recent developments in wizardry book. He's not exactly recent if he's 665, is he? That's what Fluffy's guarding on the third floor. That's what's under the trap door. The sorcerer's stone! A stone that makes gold and stops you from ever dying. No wonder Snape's after it. Snape doesn't want the stone for himself. He wants the stone for Voldemort. With the elixir of life, Voldemort will be strong again. He'll... he'll come back. Hurry! Over here! Come along then, I have something to show you at Mount. Welcome to my home, Harry. It's small, but still roomier than your cupboard under the stairs, eh? Now I can show you what I wanted to talk to you about. It's a dragon's egg, Harry. But it's our secret, mind you. The egg is at a very delicate stage. I can't leave it here alone, but I need some fire seeds to give it that last burst of heat to make it hatch. Go ahead and put them in the fire, Harry. You've done it, Harry. It's hatching. Hey, lovely. I'll call him Norbert. He's a Norwegian Ridgeback, you know. Up you come, my beauty. Thanks, Harry. Here, take this flute. It can be used to help some creatures sleep. Hmm. We'd better give Norbert his first feed soon. Harry, Ron, and Hermione spent most of their free time in Hagrid's hut, trying to convince him that he couldn't keep Norbert his beloved dragon. Eventually, after much coaxing, Hagrid agreed. Harry tried on the cloak, while Ron and Hermione helped him prepare for the climb up the tower. Be careful, Harry, said Hermione. You can't stay invisible while you cast spells. Filch might see you. With Norbert safely bundled up, Harry set off for the tallest tower. He hoped that the cloak would conceal him from Filch and his cat, Mrs. Norris. Do you think I'm blind? I'm not letting anyone into that tower tonight. Peeves, <laughs> you'll be banished for this. That could come in handy if I have to distract Filch along the way. Come out, come out wherever you are. Ron's brother, Charlie, had arranged to collect the dragon from the tower and return him to Romania. Mrs. Norris, I could have sworn I heard footsteps in here, but... Yeah, blah. Let's check the library, my sweet.
Hey, Harry, do you have 25 beads for us? <laughs> That's it. That's all the beads we need. Thanks, Harry. We couldn't have done it without you. Here's a wizard card for you. You've earned it. Thanks, Harry. We really needed these. Remember, you don't know anything about us collecting beads. It'll be our secret, right? Come on, George. We've got work to do. Once Norbert had been freed, however, Malfoy sprang his trap. Harry was caught by Professor McGonagall. For his detention, Harry was to make his way into the Forbidden Forest and search for a wounded unicorn. Is that you, Harry? Hurry up. I want to get started. Right then. Now, listen carefully. It's dangerous what we're going to do tonight, and I don't want no one taking risks. There's a unicorn in there being hurt badly by Summit. This is the second time in a week. I found one dead last Wednesday. Could a werewolf be killing the unicorns? Not fast enough. It's not easy to catch a unicorn. They're powerful magic creatures. I never knew one to be hurt before. And what if whatever hurt the unicorn finds us first? There's nothing that lives in the forest that'll hurt you. Right then. Follow me. Let's split up and search for the unicorn, Harry. The best way to find wounded unicorns is to follow a trail of silver blood. It should show up well in this moonlight. Follow the silver blood to find the unicorn. Be careful. The forest can be a dangerous place. I better go, Harry. That spoilt brat Draco is waiting with Fang. If I'm not back soon, Fang might just have him for his dinner. Ah, Potter, that oaf Hagrid sent me to tell you that we haven't found the unicorn yet. I doubt Hagrid could find the boots on his feet without a map. Don't get lost, Potter. Remember, these woods can be very dangerous. I see you found the unicorn's blood trail, Harry. I don't understand what would be killing the unicorns. Never heard anything like it before. There's summit in these woods that shouldn't be. Be careful now and stay with the path. Call me if you find anything. rescued in the nick of time by the centaur Firenze and rode on his back to safety. Firenze explained the unicorn blood had the power to keep someone alive who was an inch from death. Harry realized that the hooded figure he'd seen in the clearing was none other than he who must not be named, Lord Voldemort. You all right there, Harry? The unicorn's dead, Hagrid. It's in that clearing back there. What was that thing? A monstrous creature. It is a terrible crime to slay a unicorn. Drinking the blood of a unicorn will keep you alive even if you are an inch from death, but at a terrible price. For you have slain something so pure that from the moment the blood touches your lips, you will have a half-life, a cursed life. But who would choose such a life? Can't you think of anyone? Some say he died. Cards wallop, in my opinion. Don't know if he'd enough human left in him to die. Do you mean to say that that thing that killed the unicorn 
that was drinking its blood. That was Voldemort? I'm saying nothing. Let's get going. Oh, that was a close shave, Harry. Any creature that would kill a unicorn and drink its blood is one to be avoided at all costs. If it was Lord Volden, I mean, he who must not be named, and you better be on your guard. He's a dangerous foe. Some creatures find music very relaxing. If you play the right tune, you can send them to sleep. In fact, I remember this very tune that I used to play to my Fluffy. Try it out on this barn owl I've been looking after. He needs a good long sleep. Out like a light. I wish Fluffy was as easy to send to sleep. But you'd best be getting back to your lessons now. Thanks again, Harry. You're a real friend. You mean, you know who's out there, right now, in the forest? But he's weak. He's living off the unicorns. But if he comes back, you don't think he'd try to kill you, do you? I think if he'd have had the chance, he might have tried to kill me last night. And to think, I've been worried about my potions lesson. Thanks for the beans, Harry. We'll make sure they find a good home. Have you heard the rumour? There's a troll on the loose around here. Smells worse than Percy's socks, and that's saying something. What are you three doing? We want to see Professor Dumbledore. See Professor Dumbledore? Why? It's sort of secret. Professor Dumbledore left ten minutes ago. He received an urgent owl from the Ministry of Magic and flew off for London at once. He's gone? Yes, Mr. Potter. Gone. Goodbye. Snape's been acting very suspicious lately. He may be planning to steal the Sorcerer's Stone. But there's no way Snape would try anything while Dumbledore's around. But Dumbledore left ten minutes ago for the Ministry of Magic in London. That must mean that tonight's the night. Come on, Harry. We've got to stop Snape. What do we do? We go down the trap door. Tonight. Well, if that's what it's going to take, follow me to the third floor. Let's go! What about Filch? He's always watching the Forbidden Corridor. We'll just have to take our chances, then. You really think it's Professor Snape behind all this? <sighs> it looks like Filch is somewhere else tonight. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute, he's snoring. Look, it's obvious Snape's already got past Fluffy. If you two want to go back, don't be stupid. We're coming. Right then, I'll go first. Don't follow until I give a sign. If something bad happens, get yourselves out. Does it seem a bit quiet to you? What's this ruddy stuff? <laughs> Only Hagrid would be called this monster Fluffy. You want to go first, Hermione? No, I don't. Right. See you in a minute. I hope. It's okay! It's a soft landing! You can jump! Come on, Harry! I know what this 
is. It's a devil's snare. Oh, I'm so glad we know what it's called. That's a great help. Next time, I'm going to pay more attention in herbology. Devil's snare, devil's snare. What did Professor Sprout say? Dances in the dark, delights in the damp. Yes, of course. Try not to get too close to those tentacles. Incendio! Thanks, Harry. That was close, Harry. Thanks. Much appreciated. Oh, it was nothing. Lucky you pay attention to herbology, Hermione. This way, Harry. Curious. I've never seen birds like these. They're not birds. They're keys. And I'll bet one of them fits that door. Well, it was worth a try. Oh, what are we going to do? There must be a thousand keys up there. We're looking for a big old-fashioned one. Probably rusty like the handle. There, I see it. The one with the bright blue wings. You have to catch the key, Harry. Time to put your Quidditch skills to practice. Go on. If anyone can catch it on that old broomstick, you can. Whoa. Good luck, Harry. This complicates things a bit. Watch out! Hit those keys away! Catch the key! Hurry up! Where's Ron? He went on ahead. What? It's a chess challenge. He's better at chess than both of us. He should have waited. We're in this together. Let's go in, Harry. We need to make sure Ron's okay. Oh, Ron, are you all right? I've defeated most of the pieces, but I've been hurt. It's up to you now, Harry. <sighs> Harry, you have to be careful and avoid the pieces. They all move one square at a time. You'll have to make the pieces fight each other in order to get across safely. Walk onto the board, Harry, to start the game. Do be careful.
It's waking up! Hang on, it's still groggy. I'm going to find the right spell to open the next door. It better not wake up or we'll be in big trouble. Charm all of these objects out of its way. one. Let's see what's next. Oh no! The exit is blocked by magical fire. Looks like you have to choose the right potion. Be careful, Harry. It could be poison. This one looks like it will help us through the fire. Nintendo! Well done, Harry. You picked the right one. Snape on your own. I'll go back and help Ron. Good luck, Harry. Ugh. You! I wondered whether I'd be meeting you here, Potter. I suppose you were expecting someone else. Well, it's me, scared, stuttering Professor Quirrell. Snape! He was the... Yes, does seem the type, doesn't he? Next to him, who would suspect p -p -p poor, stuttering Professor Quirrell? But that day, during the Quidditch match, Snape tried to kill me. No, dear boy. I tried to kill you! And trust me, if Snape's cloak hadn't caught fire and broken my eye contact, I would have succeeded. Even with Snape muttering his little counter curse. Well, Snape's not here to save you now. You're far too inquisitive to remain among the living. Damn you, Potter! But, Master, it wasn't my fault. Come here, Potter! Now, tell me, what do you see? What is it? What do you see? I... I'm shaking hands with Dumbledore. I... I've won the House Cup. He lies! He has the stone. Give me the stone. Let me speak to him face to face. Master, you're, you're not strong enough. I have strength enough for this. Hurry, Potter! We meet again. Voldemort! Yes! You see what I've become? See what I must do to survive? Live off another, a mere parasite? Unicorn blood can sustain me, but it cannot give me a body of my own. But there is something that can, something that, conveniently enough, lies in your pocket. Stop him! Die, Porter! the stone. You will heal to me, Potter. You can't escape me, Potter. Surrender the stone. 
This is your last warning. Very well. I promise you'll die begging for mercy as your parents did. Dumbledore smiled. What happened down in the dungeons between yourself and Professor Quirrell is a complete secret, he said. So naturally, the whole school knows. The stone had been destroyed, but Harry remained fearful that its loss would not prevent Lord Voldemort's return. Dumbledore nodded, sharing his concern. Nevertheless, Harry, if our battles do no more than slow Voldemort's return, with luck, he may never regain his power at all. So the stone's gone, said Ron finally. Harry nodded and wished it good riddance. Then Ron produced a brand new famous Witches and Wizards card from his robes and handed it to Harry. You've got the whole set now, Harry, Ron said. Harry was stunned. Anyway, he said, you haven't got time to sit around in here. We've got Slytherin to beat. Harry, still stunned by Ron's gift, nodded slowly. He'd just defeated you-know-who, and now he was going to have to help defeat Slytherin. Now, as I understand it, the points stand thus. In fourth place, Hufflepuff. In third place, Ravenclaw. In second place, Slytherin. And in first place, Gryffindor. I have a few last-minute points to dish out. Let me see. Ah, yes. First, to Mr. Ronald Weasley, for the best played game of chess Hogwarts has seen in many years. I award Gryffindor House ten points. Second, to Miss Hermione Granger, for the use of cool logic in the face of fire. I award Gryffindor House ten points. Third, to Mr. Harry Potter for pure nerve and outstanding courage. I award Gryffindor House ten points. The House Cup ceremony will be starting soon. We should make our way to the Great Hall. Hermione's right, Harry. You don't want to miss this. We've got a real chance to beat Slytherin. Come on, Harry, let's go. Yeah, I hope we've got enough house points to beat Slytherin. I'd really love to see Malfoy's face if we do it. I bet we've got enough house points to win the cup, Harry. Let's go in now. I want to see Malfoy squirm. Well, when you're ready, Harry, we'll go in. Well, when you're ready, Harry, we'll go in. The house point totals are being calculated. We come to the end of another most eventful year at Hogwarts. The House Cup, announced Dumbledore, is awarded to the team with the most house points. At the moment, that would seem to be Slytherin. A storm of cheering and stamping broke out from the Slytherin table. However, continued Dumbledore, in recognition of Mr. Harry Potter's pure nerve and outstanding courage, I award Gryffindor 60 points. And so, for their many achievements, 
and outstanding commitment to the school, it is with great pleasure that I present the House Cup to Gryffindor. Harry's table erupted with cheers and applause. The additional points had won the House Cup for Gryffindor. It was the best evening of Harry's life. Better than winning at Quidditch or Christmas or knocking out mountain trolls. He would never, ever forget tonight. I be more than just an orphan More than just a burden without a home But there's no hope in hoping in the future I learned that a long time, a long time ago Keep my head down, don't look up for nothing I'm on my own, alone in this world So alone Today I met a man whose name was Alvis He told me that I was more than a boy He said I could learn to be a wizard I could see the magic, the wonder out there Soon I'll go to a place that he called Hogwarts Rub me with kids Kids just like me So 
no finer boy anywhere The dirt sleeves had everything they wanted But they also had a secret And their greatest fear was that somebody would discover it Somebody would discover the boy who lived The boy who That's how we're going to get out. 